I, I can't believe this is happening to me. Defeated here by you. Well, just get it over with then and send me to the Shadow Realm. <laughs> Shadow Realm? Oh no. I'm sending you to Bulgaria. No! No! Guys, it's me, John Cena here, selling out my soul to CCP since I'm a communist pig and a traitor. But no, just kidding, it's me, Commander Rick. I would never join the communists, unless they pay me very well, but yes. Anyways, hey guys, how are you guys doing today, this fine day? Wherever you are, wherever you live, I'm sure it is nice-ish, unless you're living in Brazil, that, uh... My condolences. Anyways, today I am bringing you a new cooking video and maybe if there is time I will also check us maybe some react video. Who knows, by the time I'm done with this video it's gonna be the next day because today I'm cooking around like what? It's already 7 uh, where I'm living so it's almost yeah like evening here and hopefully I finish this cooking video, check out so you can check out the new recipe that I come up came up with. Well, I sort of came up with it. Uh, I posted the uh, picture of this dish like a week, two weeks ago to you. You know that Indian curry style, whatever the hell it is. I still haven't come up with the name, but uh, I'm sure I can check something in the uh, th thumbnail section. But yes, that's that. But anyways. Yes, I'll make a new dish for you, we can check out the ingredients what you need, how to cook it, how to make it, how delicious it is, blah blah blah, all that, and maybe check some uh, new video, maybe sets, maybe some uh, other game review channel, or maybe something else, who knows, I'll see how it goes. But yes, without any further ado, let's jump right into the video, let's go. So guys, first things first, let's introduce with the, the ingredients that I'm gonna use for today's dish. There are quite a few of them, and they're quite interesting as well. So, yeah, let's check out what we have, don't we? First off, of course, we have our rice. And not just any rice, we have this uh, specially delicious steamed rice that I got. I enjoyed basmati rice, but it was a little bit, uh, I don't know, tasteless and, you know, flowery for me. I enjoyed more of this steamed rice much more. It has that, I don't know, that uh, crunchy and poppy taste that to it so it was really awesome and next up we are gonna of course use some carrots as well these are gonna go well with all the vegetables and the sauce and of course we're gonna use our coconut milk as well uh, I'm not gonna use any kind of cream sauce or you know tomato sauce or anything at all I'm just gonna use uh, this one to uh, make the heat of the spices down die down a little bit of course fresh tomatoes are also important ingredient we're not gonna use tomato paste or tomato sauce we're just gonna cook the, the, these big ass juicy tomatoes and use the, all the natural juices in them as our base sauce so yeah no need to add water or anything else at, like that just get these big ass tomatoes put them in and cook them all nice and juicy delicious Next up, we have these onions as well. We're gonna cut them in uh, cubes and, uh, you know, fry them on the pan until they're nice golden brown. We also have our broccolis and our cauliflower. Uh, we're gonna use these for our vegetables as well. They're a little bit, uh, you know, uh, dirty, but um, don't worry, I'm gonna wash them up. Uh, for our protein, I'm gonna use chicken. Unfortunately, I didn't have any chicken fillet, so I had to use this uh, deboned uh, chicken uh, uh, legs. It, it's not gonna look nice when I, once I fry them on the pan, but it's like, you know, you, you get to do what you gotta do. Plus, it was on sale, so I couldn't really pass it up. But yes, so uh, we're gonna cook this chicken, and I'm gonna add it in my vegetable sauce at, at the last part, because I don't want this chicken to overcook and become, you know, uh, like a rubbery and overcooked, you know, and dry. 
then we are also gonna add a paprika, or oh, I'm sorry, I meant to say bell pepper, as some of you people like to call it, but yes, I call them paprika, because that's what it is, it's a red paprika, so yeah, yeah, we're gonna use that one as well. And for our spices, I have this kitchen kink. I bought this at the local deli market in our capital city, and it has uh, like a lot of lot a lot of uh, ingredients and s all kinds of spice mixed into it. So yeah, I mean you could buy this one, uh, you know, just uh, <laughs> uh, like uh, all the spices you could buy uh, separately, and then just you know mix them all together by yourself. But myself, I just like to buy these ones, uh, you know, all already all in one package deal all done and you know just put them in the dish and be done with it so yeah that's that and then we have of course these uh butter beans well that's the literal trans translation sviesta popas but yes we are gonna use these beans as well for our veggies and that's pretty much it that we are gonna use for the ingredients now i'm just gonna prepare all the ingredients. Uh, first off, I'm gonna start cooking my sauce, uh, the tomatoes with the onions, and uh, my protein I'm gonna cook on the different pan and leave it off on the side. Uh, the rice I'm gonna cook at the end, so yeah. So, I prepared all the vegetables already, I cut them up in uh, all kinds of small different pieces, and they pretty much are done and ready to go. I got my carrots, my onions, my bell peppers with the beans, all cut up in nice pieces, all is great. I got my broccoli washed up and also cut up, ready to go. And of course my tomatoes, I cut up about 3 pieces of tomatoes, they were pretty big and juicy, so it's gonna be great. And of course I got my chicken, no chicken fillet unfortunately, I got the closest thing that I could get. Once I cook it, it's gonna become, you know, grey, but it's like, whatever. So I got my two pans here ready to go. I got my one pan where I'm gonna cook the chicken in, and the other pan where I'm gonna cook all the vegetables and the sauce in. First in goes the chicken, in a hot pan. I'm gonna put some uh, spices as well there, some salt, pepper, maybe some uh, paprika powder, whatever I get my hands on first, doesn't really matter. And in the other wok pan I'm gonna start putting in my onions and fry them until they're nice and golden brown colored. Gonna add all kinds of different spices that I have left over from my other cooking videos and uh, other dishes that I have left. Add them to my chicken for that extra taste and uh, nice coloring, you know, as much as color as I could get from it, but it's like, yeah, whatever. So my chicken is pretty much almost done cooking. It just needs a little bit more time, but for my other pan, I'm gonna add the tomatoes. And there we go, all the tomatoes are going in. I'm gonna cook these tomatoes until they break down all the juices that are in them. And there are no more cubes left, just this giant red soupy consistency. It's gonna be great. And here you go, as you can see, the chicken is left on the side, it's done cooking, it's all good. And my tomato sauce with the onions is uh, cooking in its own natural juices. Right now I'm gonna add a little bit of salt and of course the kitchen king uh, for the added taste and then I'm gonna add the rest of the vegetables as well.
And here we go. Our vegetables are pretty much done. Our chicken is also ready to go to put to be put in the mock pan. There we go. Now that's the way I like it. Oh yeah. The chicken uh, looks a little bit of grayish. I know it's uh, not the most beautiful color, but uh, you know, it is what it is. There, it's not the chicken breast that I wanted, but it's the closest thing that I could get. And yeah, that's pretty much it. We're gonna leave this one for about five more minutes to, you know, cook all nice and all delicious with all the spices and all the sauces together, and then we can start plating. And there we go. The food is finally ready. Now for the taste test. Let's see how it tastes. And let me just tell you guys, even though I'm narrating this like a complete amateur and not live, I will tell you this, it tastes fucking amazing. And that's pretty much it with the today's cooking video. So now that I'm gonna just edit this video out and finish up all the rest of the stuff, I'm gonna jump on the next day and check out that react video or whatever. So yeah, see you guys tomorrow. <sighs> hey guys, it's day two uh, of my new video continuation from the yesterday. So yesterday I finished my cooking video. Uh, the first part is already done. I took a nice nap. I ate some of my delicious Indian curry dish, whatever it is, that I made. And it was really nice. And my asshole didn't explode at all, so it's all good. And I decided since I'm feeling so well and dandy, I might as well check out the new set video since uh, someone asked me yesterday if I'm gonna react to it. And I'm like, mm, you know, might I might as well check it out as... Uh, since I have plenty of enough time and, you know, it's like, whatever. So, let's jump right into it. I might as well give a thumbs up, since I know it's gonna be awesome. So, yeah, let's go. Let's uh, check out what Seth is in store for us. People, Seth here. Are you hey, Seth, people here. By seeing numbers get higher. Would you like oh, to play Jacob the equivalent F of that? Dude. Except all the buttons have been replaced <laughs> well, the good with ones Chinese always have to symbols. Die first. Do you have a burning interest in Chinese martial arts, Taoism, or the pursuit of immortality? Then I invite mm. you to see where my life... Well, I don't know, man. Uh, I'm not into much, uh, like, into Chinese stuff, like cultivation. I never understood what's with the whole, like, uh, shtick with cultivation and eating pills. It's like... Yeah, cultivate what cabbages and also martial arts. I only trade in Aikido, but that's just basically you taking somebody's hand and pushing him down on the floor. Never thought much about it as a you know proper like martial arts. It's like I don't know, where's the ass kicking in that? Ugh. Life has spiraled out of control for Don't the go. past two months. Amazing cultivation simulator. Keep in uh, mind, I only paid money for this after 50 hours. Why? I've been playing this for so long that all my ads are in Chinese. Amazing cultivation simulator is a love letter oh, to hey, Chinese she, she, wushu pink. novels. Essentially, Chinese sword fantasy. The word is like a sound because it's meant to sound like a sword swipe. In the uh -huh. novels, cultivation is the cultivation of one's internal chi. Fruit yeah. practice, martial arts, meditation, whatever. And chi yeah. is the vital this is why whenever I uh, read some like online mangas and manhwas or whatever the fuck they're called, they're always just so fucking boring. It's like, uh, like, uh, how do you say it? Like Chinese manufactured like uh, stories, basically comics. It's always the same shtick. Oh, I have to uh, fucking uh, cultivate my meridians or some dumb shit like that. And it's always just get it over with. And the... Like, s translations are always so stupid, you're courting that! Or, uh, fucking, like, I don't know, uh, die you stinky boy, or some shit like that. It's like, ah, it's so fucking awful. Christ. I'll just stick to Japanese and Koreans instead, thank you very much. Breath or essence of our living ass. world, according to the same people who stick needles in your back. The <laughs> end goal of cultivation hey, is, of course, immortality. And that is what this whole game is about. Yeah. Essentially, you're going to take a small group of Chinese rice farmers and turn yeah. them into demigods. To begin, ah, yes. I need to dispel any notion Starting at all that this is sect. Chinese rim world. I do this by <laughs> comparing them directly. For example, we need a refrigerator. I'm going to build 
one. We need a refrigerator. I'm going to drop the frozen soul of a demon and reduce the temperature to absolute zero. The room is too cold. We need air conditioning. The room is too cold. Rebuild it out of wood and make the bed out of fire. Now, our disciple won't die of frostbite. What? He'll die of heat stroke. My colonist okay. is crippled, disabled, and completely geriatric. So, the cheapest option is to put him down. My disciple is an old, disabled nugget. We have regrown each of his limbs. Also, what he's now a 14-year-old boy. We're under attack <laughs> by bandits. We should get inside to safety. A man just decapitated my best friend from over 10 kilometers away with a flying fedora. Once you get past the obvious comparisons, you'll never mistake this game for anything else. To begin, you'll need to go through the tutorial. <laughs> it's so very quick and gives you a bit of background to the story. Unfortunately, There's the story. English voice oh, acting boy. is questionable. Luckily, this is a fantasy game, so the sound of women of is optional. In nice. contrast, <laughs> the music is lovely and the visuals are Good gorgeous. Post. Completing the tutorial oh, no. unlocks the actual game, which is clearly and unambiguously labeled classic, which upon mm -hmm. clicking will show a huge list of sliders and Fuck, settings to scare away the casual guaylo. <laughs> Don't touch anything, just hit confirm. Next, you're going to get trolled by the Chinese because the developers <laughs> think it's really funny that there's an almost certain guarantee that you just rolled a Yao Guai as one of your starting characters. <laughs> Let me explain, white boy. In this world, you can cultivate as either a human or a Yao Guai, which translates to monster, but really we're referring to demons. Yao Guai, henceforth referred to as yogurts, are animals that have gained sentience and become humanoid. How They're just fucking furries let's let's be honest let's not uh you know dance around what it is we we know we know why you're rolled this character we know why you're here D just don't just stop however their existence is unnatural and eventually they have to face tribulation from the heavens it's mm -hmm. sort of like god's punishment for being a furry <laughs> i wish See? i knew that before i lost my first waifu to a storm cloud but because the random character selection randomizes race and 11 <sighs> out of 12 of those races yeah, are bitch. different flavors of yogurt <laughs> you're very likely to land that until you by the way don't eat activia you're gonna shit yourself for days know what you're doing i don't recommend starting with dairy products. But if you want to speedrun the game, I recommend starting as the fastest animal on land. A turtle. You'll starve to death before you even reach the dinner table. <laughs> Beyond this point, there's not much advice I can give. You're gonna suffer and you're gonna learn Turtles from the experience. So pick your so starting perks and slow. get into the game. Everybody recommends True Sun Refining as your starting law because it's got very simple progression. And if you make a mistake, worst case scenario, you'll just die in horrific agony. If you <laughs> followed the plot, the entirety of a Taiyi sect has been annihilated. Uh, you and a handful of others meridians. are the only uh, survivors. I'm why was it destroyed right and by who? Whomst did this? Are questions <laughs> you'll have to answer if you want to uncover the mystery of a Taiyi sect. But uh, right now, your primary concern is survival. To help right. a mysterious cultivator who was tight with your former sect leader drops by for the next two weeks. As long as he's alive, you're not gonna die. That is, oh, unless nice. you go to the bottom left of a map. In which case, you will both die. Let's <laughs> get definitions going. You're running a sect. A school of cultivation. A sect has outer disciples that will happily do all of your mundane, tedious labor for a competitive salary of about zero dollars. <laughs> They're not <laughs> slaves, as per se. Yeah, basically the whole shtick with the, like, sex that I understood from uh, reading all those uh, garbage manhuas is that uh, if you are a sect leader, and the, these disciples work for you. They're basically slaves, and all you all you do is just train them, train them how to fight, uh, make them all do menial chores and stuff. And for some reason, they do it. And the end goal is like what? Be the some super f fucking OP guy that can sl uh, fly around on swords and I don't know, do stuff. It's, it's fucking retarded, to be honest. We don't use that word here. It's more like an internship, which never ends. But through a high-intensity jujitsu program like known as Foundation, they can become anything. inner disciples. Yeah. An inner disciple must choose one of the many supreme laws to follow, through which they cultivate that, that, a higher state go. of being. Their Fucking progress, abilities, Fucking and potential stupid. is largely determined by their character Jeez stats Christ. and background. Like RimWorld, everyone in this game generates with a random background, such as congenital defect, <laughs> seashell collector, and 
and effeminate male. The combination no, that's of stats will determine their compatibility <laughs> with a chosen law. You start with just one, but you'll unlock the rest as the game goes on. If I remember color correctly, Pyro said like, I met a furry or uh, you know, fanboy or something like that, and then we have this shtick, and it's like, oh boy. Wasn't there like a, some kind of, I don't know, drama where... He like uh, engage in uh, furry uh, of like uh, erotic roleplay or something like that. I don't know. I just know that I got sick to my stomach and uh, wanted to hang myself. But that's beside the point. Also, they don't have to eat, but they still do. It's not uncommon to Why? see a cultivator <laughs> feasting on ramen, even if there's currently a famine. Especially <laughs> if we're currently having a famine. Also, pro tip, you start with a single forming pill. This can Kills. instantly finish your foundation and give you an inner disciple right at the start. After promotion, you can go to the sec tab and hit establish. You would think that the pills, uh, when they say, oh, pills like uh, little uh, capsules or little tablets, but no, those fucking pills are actually like fucking fist-sized giant balls that look like brown pieces of shits rolled up and somehow you eat that shit and uh, become god or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that's that's, that's a whole shtick of pills. Pills, my ass. Publish a sect and Looks most like importantly, a giant give it a cool name. Once that shape. happens, you have officially incorporated. The rest of the game <laughs> opens <laughs> up. <laughs> Inner disciples don't work. They cultivate and get stronger. After all, this nice. is Taoist Dragon Ball Z. But after incorporation, <laughs> you can send them out to explore the world. There's two options, camp and adventure. Adventure sends them out on adventures. They leave and they come back. Camp sends them out to all stay. Right. And if you're so inclined, you can physically enter the map and fish, plunder a village. At the start, your map's going to look like this. Immediately, you're gonna notice something. One, there's barely any locations because you haven't discovered them. And two, if you try to explore the red zones, you're gonna come home in a body bag. Because <laughs> that's not your territory. So uh -huh. whose is it? A great way to find out is to visit them directly and prank them by sneaking inside their school. Once they catch you, <laughs> they'll give you a proper introduction. Break your knees, snap your spine, and gouge your eyes out. The other sects Ouch. aren't very sociable. But diplomacy is important because if they felt so inclined, they could obliterate us. To even get an audience with them, you have to make an offering. Your offering doesn't matter. Each time, they're gonna call you a broke-ass bitch anyway. That's why we wait for a cow to defecate, mark it as the trade area, and send our gift. Now, you can trade. In a world of immortality, money is an abstract concept. So, we're working on a purely barter-based economy. Ah, great sect leader. I heard great things about your sect, school, whatever. Here's my great offering. Ah, what it is. It's a piece of shit. Nice, I'll accept that. Really? Oh. All right. <laughs> However, we still have a form of currency, and yes, it's completely edible. Spirit stones are the chocolate coins of this world. You can trade them during break time for Pokemon cards, or consume them directly to restore a small amount of diabetes. In this case, they restore a small God amount of chi, so they function as both a store of wealth and a means of exchange. Each sect offers nice. something different for ridiculous amounts of money, and uh, even if you have a stacks to pay for it, we're not selling. That would be like selling weapons to your Enemy. And how do we know we can trust you? So, you have to butter them up. This is mainly done by asking people across the world whether the leader of a sect prefers cats or dogs and gifting him the appropriate kind of meat. Let's return the matters back at home. Feng Shui is a Chinese system of thought governing meow, spatial meow. arrangement and orientation in relation to the flow of qi. Have a look. Here's some simple Chinese alchemy that I expect huh. you to memorize by about 200 hours of play. Why Fellow do Satanist. I have to learn this? Nice. Because everything in this game is subject to feng shui. Everything has an element and they interact mm -hmm. with one another. Water mm -hmm. nourishes wood. Wood feeds fire. Of fire course. cools to make the earth. Earth right. produces metal and yeah. metal holds the water, allowing right. it to repeat the cycle. Okay, uh -huh. that's cool, Seth, but we don't have time for this. Wait, yeah, did my guy that. just die of heart palpitations? <laughs> Why is what, the yin-yang symbol on this bedroom red? What the <laughs> fuck does <laughs> ominous mean? When in doubt, check the pentagram. Room of wood, bed of earth. Wood defeats earth, making the feng shui of a bedroom... <laughs> you should eat me. <laughs> the guy that died because the, of a shitty furniture choice. <laughs> so, um, if I were to paint my walls one way, and I would, uh, you know, change my floor the other way, 
I would, I don't know, my fucking heart would explode. <laughs> what the fuck does, how does that make any sense? What the fuck? Ominous. And if you sleep fucking in that bedroom, Shui, you'll ass. die of a heart attack. Replace the earth bed with a fire bed, and as wood feeds fire, the feng shui will become auspicious, which means good. However, if you sleep in that bedroom, you'll die of heat stroke. <laughs> That's because fire and water control the temperature. In a you more relevant scenario, win. each of the supreme laws practiced by your cultivators has an element. Feng shui affects the speed and success of their Jesus practice. So Christ. if you're a metal cultivator, you would avoid fire <laughs> as fire melts metal. However, if being a fucking cultivator must suck ass. You can't even go a day of, of fucking going to sleep. Like, you train all these years to find uh, to fight against demonic sects or cults or whatever, you know, just uh, every day I do 10,000 push-ups, 900, blah 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 and all that shit, and then you just die in your bed because it was too hot or too cold. If you told him to meditate in an Morons. empty room and fed him laxatives, the speed of his cultivation would increase with the volume of shit he produces, <laughs> as feces is the element of earth which promotes metal. If you're confused, I sympathize. There is no way you could possibly know that in Feng Shui, the orientation of a room's door is specific to its function. In other words, bedrooms face south, workshops east, and kitchens west. That's why everything in this game has a comment box, so you and your fellow guilos can share ideas <laughs> Is about what the hell is going on. Now, the main focus of this game is cultivation <laughs> towards immortality, which can be summarized by the following post. You eat Why a pill, you sit on your ass for That's several so years, and once you're done, you go from rank 8 ping pong to rank 2 <laughs> ching chong, which is still like 100 ranks below the heavenly golden dragon god emperor star ancestor. But it's okay since... Oh, I think I read that title in uh, one of the manhwas. Like, the fucking titles for, the, for those fucking uh, stories is just completely ridiculous. Uh, like, one time I read this stupid story, it it had like a review of 2.3, obviously it was a piece of shit garbage, and it, the title was like, uh, Dragon, no, Urban Dragon Emperor uh, Supreme uh, Nephew, I believe, something along those lines. And it has always the same copy-paste character, like the main character, with like uh, dark hair and, you know, broody, you know, eyes and a shitty background. Uh, and so, edgy, oom, edgy Mac Ederson. And of course, all the retards in the comment sections when sli were seeming like, oh my god, he's so cute, and oh, get the fuck out of here. Since there are still about 3,000 chapters to go, and all the big dick characters that could kill you with a fart are currently busy. So you can go and wipe out a Ding Dong clan, which obsessively <laughs> wants you dead because you courted death by destroying the courted King Kong clan dead, after you its young master picked a fight with you over your jade-like beauty childhood friend. Essentially, you're going to perform a bunch of opaque, esoteric, and poorly understood processes to you help you reach a higher power boy. level. There's three types of cultivation Fuck in this off. game, and I'm going to mispronounce all of them. Xion Dao, Shen Dao, and physical. Xian Dao is most <laughs> relevant because it makes up 90% of the game. Your process of cultivation is derived from Chinese internal alchemy, where instead of a cauldron, you I use your could, body, uh, and instead of reagents, you use your chi like to form a golden oh, core. Think of a philosopher's Shit. stone, except backwards. That's what a golden core is. Instead of drinking the elixir of life, we are the elixir of life. Oh. Xian Dao is unique since you can transcribe your knowledge to a manual. This means a single cultivator can study from every other law and become exponentially more powerful. This oh yes, you also become powerful in these types of stories by reading a book. You're like, okay, I'm gonna learn this technique. Okay, so you do your hand like this, and then you can kill like a giant snake god. Oh, sweet. This can lead to interesting Fuck. situations where someone might learn skills they really weren't supposed to, such <laughs> as a male cultivator learning lunar form from the sunflower refining law and by doing so, reversing his sex. Becoming female in this game results in the loss of your penis, which can be picked up and sold on the open market. You can even make money off this by regrowing your penis, which will, upon realizing that you're not meant to have one, detach immediately. Each time you harvest a crop of penis. You become the dick farmer. But I digress. To reach a higher power level, you have to perform a breakthrough. This is essentially a bottleneck no in your way. training, which you have to overcome or you can't progress. This is, gives a new meaning to eat a bag of dicks. It's like, how do you even eat a bag of dicks? Oh, you know, you just go out to this cultivator sect, you ask them to, you know, harvest a few pieces of dicks, uh, place them in the bag, and there you go. You can eat all the dicks you want. Golden <laughs> 
war, <laughs> however, is different. It is the single most Fuck important sake. breakthrough of your career. Every condition right. has to be perfect. The season, the weather, the time of day, the mental state of a cultivator, the element of a room, Schizo the chi gang. density, and the amount of chi flowing through the cultivator's meridians. Get all those right, Meri and you just go. might get a... Meridians are like uh, the blood vessels of some magical ooga booga shit or whatever. It's uh, And if your meridians are cut off, you become a useless piece of shit. Basically, you become a wagey or a peasant or whatever. So, yeah. Ah, oh, my meridians are cut off. Ah, oh, now I can't pra practice this uh, ooh, mystical stuff or whatever. Eh, whatever, just shoot a guy in the head with a 9mm. Actually, never mind. 9mm is like a pellet gun. A better result than I did. I genuinely thought I did pretty good for my first time. Tier 9, I thought to myself, that's oh. a pretty high number. I tier 9 is the <laughs> lowest tier of Golden Core. It is trash. Literally, swallow a rebirth pill and reincarnate yourself, my man. You fucked up. <laughs> Early on, your Golden Cores are gonna suck. But with experience comes knowledge. And once you learn how, you'll be making some fat cores on a regular. Then, there's Shandao cultivation. Instead of cultivating your chi, you take in the chi of others through worship. Belief oh. is power, and the more people believe in you, the more powerful you become. Once you oh, establish like yourself as a divine nice. being with a realm of heaven, you can be the petty god you've always wanted. As a rule, <laughs> I only answer bad prayers. Drought, bandits, famine, refuse. Don't waste my time. You wish that tomorrow your favorite brothel prostitute hasn't been taken? Granted. You want your boss to step in dog shit? Granted. You want the guy who stole from you to be struck by lightning? My pleasure. You want those annoying neighbors next door to die in horrific agony? Me too. You want nice. someone to celebrate your birthday with you this year? Granted. No. At some point, I learned to stop worrying and love Shandao. Also, they get the most ridiculous titles. Just imagine that every prayer addressed to you has to be prefaced with Dear Primordial, True Venerated, Great Pardon, Supreme <laughs> Virtue, Venerated, Holy... There we go. These are the fucking titles I'm talking about. The fucking uh, comic uh, stories they always put out. Like, you will see this fucking piece of crap title just slapped on the fucking uh, manhole or whatever and it just says this giant ass title blah 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 of the supreme emperor immortal Woo! and it's just like you oh man this looks cool and you read it and you're like man this fucking sucks and then you go to like comic se comment sections everyone's like simping oh yay so great oh hell she she pink emperor. That oh, leaves know, us with physical cultivation. What is physical cultivation? It's an mm. inner disciple that spent the last 50 days remolding his phallus. Due to the mental state Wait, bonus what? of having a gigantic penis, he is now <laughs> physically immune to depression. In all seriousness, you take a mortal and you turn him Damn, into I a want super that. saiyan. Every Who body part, limb, joint, bone, pills. and organ you of your body do you can remold until you become Goku. And then you give him <laughs> intense PTSD so he can channel those repressed memories to increase his attack power from 1 million to 7 million and fuck? one shot the entire game. Also, since every nice. yogurt comes from a different animal, they all have unique anatomy that's different to humans, which means for every species of demon you like turn to physical cultivation, there's tissue, bones, and organs not found anywhere else. In other right. words, fuck your opposable thumbs. I got vertebrae fused to my carapace. <laughs> Sooner or later, your sect is going to be attacked by bandits, demons, or other cultivators, with the exception of physical cultivators, which remove organs with their bare hands, Xiandao and Shandao mm. cultivators fight using artifacts. What is an artifact? Well, anything. Jeez. A Kleenex <laughs> tissue, a bowl of ramen, a bag of flour, a bucket of water, a pile of shit, severed male genitalia, as long as you enchant... <laughs> That's literally all of the artifacts also I have read from these stories. Like, I think I... There was this one story where a fucking artifact was literally a rake, uh, you know, for, you know, for leaves, uh, for raking the leaves. And I was like, seriously? This sh Fuck's sake. And it, you can use it. Preferably, try to enchant an actual weapon. Although, you can't deny it's very demoralizing to see your fellow bandit get decapitated by blue fabric summer <laughs> shirt. Combat is basically <laughs> your guys sit around and watch as their artifacts cut everyone to pieces. It's pretty fun to watch, especially larger uh. battles, where the sky is nothing but swords. Of course, no cultivation is complete without embracing traditional Chinese medicine. That's right, yeah, alchemy. Cool. 
Here's a good summary of what alchemy is like. Change the weather. Lose 20 years of your natural lifespan, which may sound bad, until you visit the local Chinese pharmacy and pop a pill which adds 500, another which adds 280, and wash it all down with some mineral water which adds another 99. Now the only thing you yeah, have look, to cure a is perpetual male. baby face, which is a common symptom when you have a lifespan of 3,000. You want Oof. something done? Yeah, there's a pill for that. Obesity? No problem. Not obese Ooh, enough? Nice. I gotcha. Would you like to <laughs> prank a demon? Force feed him a rebirth pill and he'll reincarnate right back into a piece of pork on your dinner plate. <laughs> the cycle of karma is a fickle mystery. <laughs> Honestly, if alchemy made any more sense, I'd actually oh, be upset. Nice. Now, uh, if you'll excuse me, I'm gonna put myself in a coma for three days. About 30 <laughs> days in, you're gonna get a pet. A divine pet. This is oh. different to normal pets, which you adopt into your sect by shooting them with hunting bows, which are somehow blunt and tipped with anesthetic. This may sound very stupid, but on the yeah, other hand, Gundo does. Musashi had <laughs> bullets that put you to sleep, and that was a masterpiece. Anyway, he starts off as a baby <laughs> and grows larger with time. He's also a little shit, and you're gonna have to keep an eye on him before he destroys your sect. For example, oh, my this little fucker. It's like uh, playing uh, that game, what was it called? Black and White? Uh, I think I played the only Black and White 2. Uh, where you play basically play like this uh, god uh, with a literal hand. You have to like uh, construct like the biggest bad uh, badass city ever. You know, just rule over the people, and you get like these divine beasts: a wolf, a monkey, a cow, and a lion, I believe. And you have to like uh, grow them from these little meeky little pests to like uber danger, like a uh, giant badass beasts. Like, uh, and you have to train them as well. Like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> Can I poop on these citizens? No, you cannot. Can I poop in the trees? Sure, go ahead. Can I poop in this temple? For fuck's sake, can you stop with the shitting all over the place? How many times do I have to slap you? My friend saw one of his cultivators doing a breakthrough, and he thought to himself, Fuck, my man is literally shitting himself. This is one intense breakthrough. Turned out his dog was feeding laxatives to all of his inner disciples. It is your responsibility to teach them right from wrong. Peasants slacking on the job? Yes. Attack outer disciples. Give them some cardio. Drug inner disciples with euphoria pills? Why not? Give them some opium. An injured stranger wants our help? Yes. Attack unknown mortals. Kill them. Whether you raise him to be a functional member of society or a four-legged sociopath is entirely <laughs> up to you. You can even rename him to something a little more Chinese. If you include the Bamboo Forest <laughs> DLC, which adds a pair of pandas, there's five pets oh, in gosh. total. They're incredibly cute and generally amazing. At the beginning, your sect can only hold 12 members. This increases to Fuck 24, you know. then 36 as your reputation increases. Reputation also increases the power level of invading enemies. Don't right. let this number get out of control or you'll experience firsthand what it's like to lose a 50-hour game in five seconds, yeah, which is a good time it. to inform you that in this game, you can draw Chinese talismans with your mouse, the accuracy ah, of which that's... determines the blessing. You can Oof. even draw on a blank sheet of paper, and it's still gonna work. I know what? this because really? somebody drew a swastika, and apparently they can now use the <laughs> oven 12% faster. So please Whoa, draw nice. a bunch of invisibility scrolls and wear them when you go on adventures. <laughs> your sect will thank you each time they haven't been murdered in your... I mean, swastika is... Uh... Technically, in my country, it's an ancient symbol for the Thunder God, and in Japan, it's like a Buddhist symbol or something like that, so... Makes sense. For absence. It's maybe, not easy to make stacks in this Hitler game, which is Buddhist. why we have to trick villagers know. into filling our ranks. We do this by making small talk, finding out that <laughs> half of them love nothing more than to ravenously consume shit and invite them <laughs> over, because we're gonna need a lot of manpower for our Chinese sweatshop, as oh, inner disciples nice. cultivate immortality, outer disciples cultivate huge plantations of cotton. We're nice. gonna process that down to fabric and we're hey gonna wait because very soon a merchant is gonna show up. He operates on a sweatshop economy. He's gonna pay you garbage Sweet. so you better have a high volume of garbage to sell. Luckily, our emaciated peasants have worked hard this summer and we just earned 10,000 spirit stones. We're gonna celebrate by losing it instantaneously because oh. the merchant also sells an invitation to an exclusive event. Read the token and we're off to the auction house. Have you ever gone to an auction where you uh, no, can't even really. see what's being sold, but instead are given a vague description? Hard. Lumpy. A man. Oh, interesting. It's almost like, uh, what was it, uh, Jake's Paul's Mystery Box uh, videos, where he, uh, you know, 
actually sell uh, gambling to children, like, Oh man, this mystery box, it's only five ninety nine. what am I gonna win? A fucking Lamborghini? Ah, yes! Man's hand shoots up. I'll take it for 10,000. Not to be outdone, I raise his offer. I'll take Sigma it for 12,000. <laughs> Another joins in. 13. Another raises. 14. The rest fold because they're poor as fuck. Those who remain keep raising. Eventually, there's only two of us. One final raise. 56,000. I won the bid, but I don't have 56,000. But yeah, uh, they don't do? know that. The auction ends. It's time to pay. I can't pay. I am under arrest, but I'm not because I am a mannequin <laughs> made of straw. I never went to the auction. I took a clone pill and sent my body double. And that is a good summary of the auction house experience. It's not about what we bid on. It's about why we do it. We do it to no. flex on the poor. While keeping a low profile is important, you should expand when given the chance. You see, oh, your nice. sect is local, but we can export the culture, the lifestyle, and the religion to the rest of fantasy China. Mm. To do this, we establish agencies. <laughs> then we set a policy for each region and grow our influence. Depending uh, on the policy, like you Chinese get random propaganda. events, which nice. have to be solved using insanity. You get a bunch of buttons, which I assume is what a paranoid schizophrenic's dialogue options yeah. look like, and you press whichever one yeah. you... You should also introduce a new, uh, like, uh, excellent Chinese, like, uh, culture. It's called uh, putting suicide helmets on your soldiers. So, you know, uh, the enemies don't capture you or some shit like that. It doesn't matter. It's mostly just for people, like, saying, uh, Sir, I don't want to go to that battlefield. What did you just say? Literal suicide squad army. <laughs> you think is appropriate to the situation. Options include talk, bribe, kill, seduce, or throw a rock at someone and stone them to death. Foreigner scamming the God locals, murder him. Another sect is preaching about their faith. Pay them a hundred spirit stones to fuck off. Is it currently Ramadan in the Great Desert? Start <laughs> handing out food. Believe me, nice. the longer you do it, the more sense it makes, or the more warped and psychopathic your reasoning becomes. For example, you're building a wonder and some people drop by to ask what you're doing. Wrong answer, debate Feng Shui. <laughs> Correct answer, beat them with a club. If you solve stuff correctly, you get a bunch more followers. Followers can dig up natural resources, generate belief that converts into experience, completely skipping the grind of cultivation, and be sacrificed for the greater good. You nice. see, we're gonna need a lot of anguish soul gems, which are formed from a painful death in ominous Feng Shui. Luckily, oh, with agencies, course. there's no shortage of fresh and willing more Mortals. With reputation, yeah. you can build a Bunch sect gate. This is the front door where hopeful mortals arrive to prostrate themselves, begging to be recruited. But instead, <laughs> we're going to build a hell gate, which is the same gate, but in a room with ominous feng shui at a comfortably cool temperature <laughs> of absolute zero. We're gonna recruit mortals from every city. They will arrive, pray to hell gate, and freeze to death in horrific agony. <laughs> and the negative moral consequence of such an action? Zero. Because they have died through no fault of our own. This is <laughs> <laughs> Fucking nice. Oh, sir, all the recruits died out the gate. Uh, pff, I don't know. Whoops, it easy. Some mysterious. Stuff happened. I don't know. I didn't do nothing. <laughs> Time to introduce alignment. Your sect can be good or evil, but preferably Shady. we want a balance. So we have good relations with both a virtuous and the demonic. This game exemplifies the Chinese practice of moral <laughs> relativity. Hmm. What are they doing there? What are they, <laughs> protesters? If I horrifically <laughs> mutilate someone's dying body to extract the location of their friends and family, that's slightly evil. But as long as you give them a proper burial, that's a net neutral action. And we have done nothing wrong. Or let's say a curious stranger comes by to ask what you're doing, and then stands there waiting for an answer, until he collapses from extreme first. At which point, I feed him a laxative and watch him shit himself to death. Is it wrong to watch a dying man's ass fertilize my field? No, not at all. But if I turn a bandit's dead, broken body into a flesh puppet to serve us economically until it rots away, that's considered evil. A bigger question, I guess, is if I get decapitated by a dragon while adventuring, fly back home without a head, and use Yang God possession to transfer my consciousness into the body of another man's wife, would that make me a homosexual? Some questions have no clear answer. Have you ever frozen to death during winter because the 
wall of your house stood up and walked away. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this game, that's a frequent occurrence. Without warning, anything on the map can gain sentience. Sentient oh, objects can also <laughs> randomly enter the map. As I've seen entire pagodas march in and flatten my base. What's the point of them? To grief you. But more seriously, you can turn them into a 14-year-old boy. What is the application of this? Well, you can take Why? a shit, give it sentience, and turn it into a human. Who you're going to call Big Chungus because the guys on Discord <laughs> datamine the Chinese code and find out that specific set of Latin characters ensures that the sentient state will generate to the highest stats possible. Then you're going to make a literal piece of shit become a demigod and ascend to heaven. And that's what cultivation is all about. By the way, everyone who ever goes to heaven, whether by death or ascension, gets a little epilogue Jesus section so Christ, you can dude. follow the shenanigans of former disciples. Here's a sample of the literary gems you might encounter. Ming Wu reincarnated as an ant, but got drowned to death by a mean child who peed on the ant nest. Then he reincarnated into a parrot, but because he learned a lot of profanities and was swearing all day, someone plucked out his feathers and he froze to death. And in his next life as a human, he met a strange acting boy. And believing him to be an immortal in disguise that could teach him cultivation, he took him in as his own. However, as it turned out, the child was actually mentally retarded. Later on, you'll find out combat gets a little more complicated with the introduction of formations. Oh, to God. understand what that is, go my to God, another sect and try stealing. The moment you do so, a gigantic oh, bubble forms Jesus. in the sky and tears you to oh, pieces. My, this is I called a formation. The leader of it is called the pillar and everyone around them an auxiliary. It follows the rules of Feng Shui, so different right. elements will feed each other as they flow back to the pillar. It might look very oriental but honestly it's just chinese lego what's the point of formation oh, okay. to deal with a little cave that appears in our oh. base after about 200 days if you're not ready and you need to suppress it give it a nice room this will a buy you some time hole, but eh? whatever you do don't give it offerings it's going to break out anyway but your sacrifices will make it stronger so oh. we may as well piss it off Welcome to the official casual filter. The first boss you're going to encounter is the Flood Dragon, and it has a chi of about 10 million. Good luck. Honestly, if you get to the stage, congrats. Now, swallow your pride, go read a bunch of guides, and install some guys. mods. It'll improve your life greatly. <laughs> I'll attach the ones I Lost use for below. Me. There's nothing guys essential, so but when you have to micromanage the mental state of about 18 different cultivators, it does get tiresome. Yeah. Listen, I've been writing the script for close to a month. There's no way to include everything and I want my life back. So here's a stream of consciousness before I give an arbitrary score and go live in the woods. Each sect has a wonder. Yours is no exception. Go to the ruins of a Taiyi sect and bring it back. The mini universe is a game changer. It's an infinite pocket plane that sucks in material and spits it out. But could there be a deeper, more mysterious function? No, not. it's just storage. No longer <laughs> will your peasants have to walk for nourishment because the best soups of a Wuhan wet market are going to fly right into their hands. After killing nice. your first blood dragon, which will always, without fail, crash its body into one of my expensive cultivation rooms, <laughs> the game removes all safety checks. You can now summon the phoenix, which creates 10 days of extreme drought, during which time your base is going to burn to the ground, because you forgot to move a single phoenix feather, which landed in a bedroom and turned the temperature to about twice the melting point of steel. After 10 days of drought, it doesn't nice. stop. It's permanent. The only way to end it is with a a rainstorm miracle, which will make your phoenix very upset. It's stronger than the flood dragon, by the way. Also, you can't kill a phoenix. Each time you do, it's just gonna reincarnate. Oh, Maybe I should have mentioned that earlier. Again, good luck. <laughs> then there's the torch dragon, which is larger than the entire screen that, and comes in a yin yang shit. variant, respective to the time of day. Each variant is invincible to elements of the same polarity, and even worse, they make him stronger. Also, he's gonna lay a bunch of eggs. You should probably just ignore them. And and if you survive all that, there's really one challenge left. Genociding every other sect and beating them into submission. Once that's done, you can truly say, I finished the game. <laughs> now you can go back and play on the real difficulty. Oh, I do, boy. however, have some major complaints. Remember the story? <laughs> the plot? Weren't we Wait, supposed to investigate the mystery of a Taiyi sect and why it was destroyed? <laughs> yes, but the process of doing so is so terrible that I'm just gonna save you the pain and tell you instead. You see, every character 
that's not your own can be interacted with, and we uncover the plot through the talking minigame. Primarily, this is done by adventuring to another sect. You talk to people, you get favor. After a while, you don't get favor. You only get favor from juicy gossip. So, you have to talk to another character, learn something about them, go back to the first character, and tell them a secret about the second. But to get the secret from the second, I'll have to talk to 20 other people to have enough Ooh, gossip boy. and rumors to trade for more gossip and rumors. It's an infinite web of high school bullshit. It's the experience yeah. of being a teenage girl. Because you can't get the information <laughs> you need no. directly. Hey, you have to go minute, through the PMS chain of command to learn absolutely anything. Now, here's the big problem. You might see so. a little question mark on someone next to the mystery tab. These are the people you need to investigate to solve the mystery. Again, oh. you have to ask an entire sorority if they think that person knows something. <laughs> if you ask them face to face without circumstantial evidence, they'll act dumb and say nothing. And even if you know that they know, they still have to mm -hmm. open up to give you that information, which is dependent on their personality. If they're naive, that's the best case scenario, because you don't have to do anything. If they're <laughs> greedy, you have to bribe them. If they're weak, you have Just to kill them. If they're tough, shit. you have to gaslight their personal weakness. But if they're withdrawn, unfortunately, you are screwed. Because the only way to make a withdrawn person open up is to make your spirit dog act playful in front of them. This requires right. a fully grown Easy spirit enough. dog, which can take hundreds of days, and each time you do it, he loses intelligence from the <laughs> retardation of this minigame, which takes 10 to 20 days to recover. About 20... I mean, aren't all mysterious corgi dogs of the ancient Chinese uh, woo -woo 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 magic kind of retarded? I don't know. I just talk me out of my ass. Hours in, my eyes bloodshot and attention slipping, I managed to solve the first two mysteries. You do uh -uh. this by finding clues, participants, and motives, and slapping them together. The more you find, the more complete and accurate your solution is. This then looks like I a talk to the next five characters, and they were all <laughs> withdrawn, and I quit the game. I have never seen a story mechanic that's more laborious, uh. difficult, and poorly fought out. But it doesn't end there. It gets better. You can fucking do all of that and of still hard lock here. yourself from completing the Jesus game because Christ. you didn't pick the right option for a specific oh, event boy, oh, on boy, day oh, 565. Or you waited too long and and someone essential to the plot has died of old age. Still, oh, I wasn't entirely sure about the story, <laughs> so I had to bring in the expert, resident merchant, aficionado of Ben 10 porn, and mentioned <laughs> on several no-fly listings across Thailand. Hello, my nigga. I, I become rap people because I eat watermelon. Jack. His hard drive <laughs> died about five times while explaining. But here's the gist of it. The Thai Yi sect was attacked. By who? By everyone. Uh. Both the evil and virtuous sect leaders conspired together to wipe it out. But right. what could justify such a strange alliance? Because the old leader of a Thai Yi sect is none other than the demon emperor Fu Pekong, who is currently <laughs> inside your mini that? universe. If you talk to him, you'll get your answers. You see, cultivation is difficult, but it's also strangely common to see someone go from mortal to demigod in just a few weeks. That's because this world isn't real. Overwhelmed what? by demons, the elders left the great vastness of the universe <gasps> to this pocket universe, where <laughs> cultivation is quick, but the creed of heaven is weakened. And once it fails, this universe will end. They took a shortcut to <laughs> artificial power, and now they're trying their best to hold on. In the final act, a cutscene plays, and Fu Pekong undoes the universe, throwing us back into the great vastness. Everyone is mortal again, but this time, we can do it for real. Finally, <laughs> a title card drops, coming in 2023. Wait, Bug what? Snacks too. And that's the story of an amazing <laughs> cultivation simulator. So you never have to go through that horrific experience. In conclusion, I give Amazing Cultivation Simulator 10 out of 10 euphoria pills. <laughs> I hate it. It's like the opium wars, except in this case, the Chinese are winning. If you're interested, you can get a copy nice. on Steam. Also, it's coming to GOG on the 23rd of July. <laughs> this is made possible thanks to Polish greed and my growing alliance with a CCP. Because I like oh, to bet on the winning pink. team. And right now, yeah, that's brother. Team China. A warm thanks to the many members of a merchant's guild <laughs> generously funding and bankrolling these videos. You're all truly wonderful. Have a good one. Have a good one as well, Seth. <laughs> God damn it. God damn it, there's so many merchants. Maybe I should join. But maybe not. I don't know. One dollar a month? That's too much. Plus, I don't really have the PayPal account or whatever. I don't trust that shit. They're just gonna take away all my wallet and, you know, leave me drive.
that's that's what I believe, unfortunately. But yes. So uh, thank you guys for just suggesting this video. Uh, it was excellent, real nice, real good. Uh, great video by Seth, <laughs> as always. Hope you guys enjoyed as well my cooking video. At least I hope you did. I hope you mostly just came for my delicious recipes and not just, you know, my react videos. I mean, come on, guys. I try really hard here. <laughs> but yeah, anyways, uh, thanks for suggesting this video. Um, continue doing more uh, content in the future. You know, the stuff that I want. And, uh, ooh, I forgot to also one thing. Uh, around the... At the end of the month, I won't be uploading for a little bit of a while because me and the boys are gonna go on our Euro trip. Yeah, some of our uh, Discord pals are gonna take a van and we're gonna go to Sweden and, uh, s uh, you know, visit those refugee camps and see if we can get mugged. Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be fun. But yes, uh, we're gonna go on a Euro trip. I won't be uploading anything, but I will be uh, filming along the way. So I'm gonna upload like. Um, uh, travel vlog video or some shit like that. You know, like the last time when I uh, showed uh, the uh, the places around uh, my home city of Sigurd. So, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. But yes. Ah, thank you guys for tuning in and I'll see you next time. Peace. Bye.